Today, we're going to be talking about etiquette. First question you might ask yourself is, why are we discussing etiquette before we play a game? We don't have these conversations when we're about to play Monopoly or Scrabble, so why is it important to have these conversations now before we play D&D? It's actually a pretty simple answer. D&D is not like other games. In fact, no tabletop RPG is. It's an immersive experience. Everything that happens within that game happens firsthand. This might actually blow your mind. Studies show that when you're playing a tabletop RPG like Dungeons and Dragons, you're actually forming memories in the same part of your brain that formulates memories when things happen in real life. So when your fictional character fires an arrow and strikes down that beast, in your head, you actually categorize that experience as a real memory. That's just the depth to which these games are so immersive. So with that in mind, we have to take an extra level of care when it comes to protecting each other while we play, as well as making sure that the game runs smoothly. Another core reason is just the quantity of gameplay time. When you're playing D&D, you might play once a week for three, four, five hours, and it's with the same group of people for months, if not years at a time. You're building a collaborative story, and when everyone's on the same page, you can make sure that that actually sustains, that nobody's getting their feelings hurt, no one's feeling left out or neglected. At the same time, everyone feels like they can continue to collaborate on the story for years to come. It's worth noting that everything I outline here in this video is completely subjective. These are simply the etiquette guidelines that have worked for me and my table to help us sustain for months and months on end and have a really, really fun campaign while still respecting one another and making sure we're taking care of each other first. I'm going to start with by far the most important rule that we can go over in this video. And it's really simply this respect the boundaries of the other players. When you play D&D, you're telling a collaborative story, and by nature, you're going to get to create storylines within that story. You're gonna to get to make decisions that impact others to go down these roads and sort of explore different themes and ideas and characters, but it can also take a little bit of a turn if you're not careful. If you don't believe that this actually happens in the real world, just go to RPG Horror Stories on Reddit. It's a subreddit filled to the brim with stories of people doing the most asinine things during their D&D games and just making everyone so uncomfortable doing the worst sort of things. But that's the trick here. Worst sort of things and making people uncomfortable, these are subjective ideas. And depending on the table, Something you may consider totally fine and normal would be a theme or an idea that could make another player feel incredibly uncomfortable. You don't know the history of that player. You don't know their real life experiences, the lived experiences that have shaped them as a person. And you could be unintentionally digging up old traumas or triggering something within them that causes a deep level of discomfort in what should be an escapism experience. And I know that no one within their right mind would ever want to pull somebody out of their favorite hobby, out of their time with friends, and remind them of real world trauma and tragedy by simply saying something off color, thinking that it's totally harmless. That's why it's so important that you as a group have conversations about boundaries. One tip that I like to mention is sending your DM anonymously the content that you consider a hard no, the lines that you do not want crossed in the game. For instance, in our game, we don't incorporate any harm to children or sexual content. Now that doesn't mean we don't have romantic storylines, we just implement a fade to black policy. The fade to black policy is simply this, if you wanna engage in a romantic relationship or any sort of physical interaction in a romantic way with an NPC, that's totally fine, but I'm not going to describe it or narrate it because that might make certain people at the table a little bit uncomfortable. And personally, as a DM, that's a, a boundary for me. I don't want to have to describe those things. And so it's just a boundary we don't cross. For your table, that may look completely different, but that's rule number one, first and foremost, always respect the boundaries of the other players. Have those conversations before you play and never under any circumstances cross the boundaries of another player. To me, respecting player boundaries is the backbone of making sure you have healthy interactions between party members when you're playing D&D. But there's one rule that I think is the healthy backbone to facilitating a good experience for your dungeon master. And ultimately, if your DM gets burnt out or stops having fun, you don't have a game anymore. And it's really, really important that you respect your DM's time and also their attention. And that brings us to rule two, respect the dungeon master's authority. Your DM is a facilitator, a storyteller, and a referee. They're wearing a lot of hats and they're gonna make mistakes. If a DM makes a ruling that you don't like, I always suggest this simple communication tactic. I think it's okay to bring it up one time. 
meaning, hey, DM, I'm not sure if you know this, but in the rules, it actually states X, Y, and Z. If your DM says, I know, but that's not how we're playing it tonight, just roll with it. If you really don't like it, that's something to discuss after the game and then potentially discuss as a group how much leeway and how much uh, how much leeway you're comfortable with the DM having when it comes to stretching and bending the rules. And that's something for you guys to figure out as a group. But while you're playing, respect that some people may have gotten babysitters for this night. Some people have been looking forward to this for days, if not weeks. Bickering about rules is the quickest way to slow down a game, it, to embarrass a DM, to make the rest of the group sort of roll their eyes and go, oh gosh, not again. It's just not fun for anyone. And it's worth keeping the flow of the game going, making sure the DM stays on top of their task by simply saying, you know, okay, cool, I'm gonna go with that ruling for now. And then after the game, bring it up and say, hey, I just wanna say, I don't really agree with this type of ruling, can we discuss it? There's three more rules here, and these are, I don't think as vital as those first two, but they're completely vital nonetheless. The first one is don't compete collaborate. This is the backbone of having not only functional play, but just really, really fun play. Uh, Matt Mercer has a great quote, the incredible DM Matt Mercer. Uh, he said that you can tell a great D&D uh, &D player from a good D&D &D player because a good D&D &D player comes to the table wondering what uh, cool things they can do with their character. A great D&D &D player comes to the table wondering what great things they can uh, help the other people at the table do right? It's that collaborative mindset. That's what's so, so vital. When you step up to the table and you're ready to roll some dice on that Friday night, everyone's there, everyone's ready. It's easy to fall into the trap of, of being like, okay, what epic things can I do tonight? What ends up happening as a party is that everyone at the table is thinking that. Everyone's sitting there going, hmm, I wonder what I can do. What makes me look good? What can I get? Where's my loot? That selfish mindset causes you to sort of compete with your other party members a little bit and now no one's collaborating, everyone's operating on their own levels and you don't get those cool interactive story moments. You're no longer the Avengers, it's five or six people telling a solo story. That's not fun for anyone. It's especially difficult for the DM. There's no way to win in D&D. There's no way to beat the game. So it's not worth approaching the game with a competitive mindset really ever. Instead, approach with a collaborative mindset. What can I do to make the most epic moment possible for all of us? Then you're working as a team. This next rule is very simple. Don't crosstalk. What is crosstalk? Crosstalk is having a side conversation when either the DM or another player has the spotlight. This does a couple things. It subtly communicates that you don't really care what they're saying or what their character's doing in that moment. Crosstalk can also take many forms, texting at the table, scrolling through Facebook. Crosstalk is anything that distracts from having your attention really, really focused on the person who has the spotlight. Oftentimes that's the DM. We get used to hearing the DM's voice so often, we begin to tune out, we're scrolling on our phone because guess what, it's not our moment. Who cares if it's your moment? Devote your attention to the game. The DM has devoted hours and hours and hours of attention to putting together a session for you and your friends to have a really, really good time together. Everyone has carved out a little piece of their weekend to sit around a table and play or to gather around their computers and play. The least you can do is give them your undivided attention and make sure that they're not distracted, especially as a person with ADHD and there's another player in our group that has ADHD as well. If you distract us with crosstalk, we're gonna completely lose our thread of what we were talking about and now we're onto something else. You've just ruined the moment for us. So make sure you don't crosstalk. Give players your undivided attention. We watch D&D live streams like Critical Role or Dimension 20, and we see these amazing people doing these amazing voices and amazing characters, and it's just so immersive, and they're doing cool, funny voices, and they're acting out this, this super unique character, and it's an amazing experience to watch. Then when we sit down at our own tables very often, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like a bunch of awkward moments sort of strung together by some combat, and we're trying to find our groove, and it's weird, and it's messy, and none of us are quite getting the hang of it. This next rule is meant to absolutely ensure that you guys have the space as a group to actually get out of your comfort zones and role play. Don't ever make another player feel stupid for getting out of their comfort zone. We have a couple players in our current campaign who are very quiet. The last thing you would ever wanna to do to one of these players is laugh at them or make fun of the voice that they're doing for their character or a decision that they've said or the fact that they stuttered or stammered through a sentence or their reluctance to speak up in the first place. 
all of us have different personality types, all of us have different tendencies, and all of us have different levels of anxiety and comfort when it comes to actually role playing at the table. For some of us seasoned nerd veterans that don't have any problem doing stupid, funny voices, this is very, very hard to comprehend the idea that you wouldn't want to just get into your character's skin. But for some of us, this is incredibly nerve wracking. It feels like we're on the spot. It feels like we're um, talking to a group of people who don't want to hear us. And the last thing you want to do is make that person feel dumb for kind of stepping a foot out of the comfort zone and giving it a shot. Always encourage people to get out of their comfort zone, get out of their shell, and to really express themselves during the game. If you are a DM watching this right now and you notice someone at your table is ever teasing, giggling, or making comments about someone else's role playing, make sure you put a stop to that right then and there. That's all five rules real quick. I'm gonna recap them. Always respect player boundaries. Respect the DM's calls, even if you don't agree with it. Don't compete, collaborate. Don't cross talk. And always just as an addendum, make sure to listen to those quieter players. Encourage them to talk too. Never make another player feel stupid for role playing. That's all I had for you guys. It's a really simple, short video. I think if you guys can adhere to these and, and whatever other house rules your DM has for you, you guys will have an incredible time. Make sure you're actively checking in with yourself and the other people at the table to make sure you're doing a good job of this. If you guys all kind of keep each other accountable, you'll have a really healthy group that can last for a really, really long time. Obviously, this is not an exhaustive list, but I would love to know in the comments if there's anything you guys feel like I left out that was super, super vital to your game and making sure the integrity of your game is protected. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.